How's it going guys? Today I am very, very happy to bring you the best build of all time in Skyrim. I don't know how many of you saw my last few videos, the best mage, the best thief, and the best warrior, but this is all three of them and more. So for the best build of all time, I'm going to be the most hated race in the world right now. Now, I don't know why everybody hates this race, but certainly it's been getting lots and lots of hate recently. Can you guess what race it is? If you haven't guessed, it's the white male. We are going to be a white male, and yeah, this is what we got going on so far. And I am going to name my white male Talos. All right, Talos, the best build of all time. Skyrim, how to make a god, everybody. Okay, now for this part, very important, you wanna grab one suit of heavy armor, two to three suits of light armor and then whatever else you can carry that's expensive just to get 50 gold a little later on okay so minimum three suits come over here get the spell sparks and this mage stuff all right read that make your way through the dungeon in whatever fashion you prefer once you make your way out La la la. We are just going to be headed over here. There's a little camp and a shrine of Talos. So make your way to the camp. You know what to do. And at this camp, there's a couple items of interest. There is this black robe to disenchant and also a skill book right here. One handed. And then just behind that camp, you walk around along the cliff side and you will find this shrine and there's always a dead Thalmer with this robe and one random enchanted item. And then you want to proceed to the three stones and first we're going to be getting the mage stone because we're going to get enchanting to 100 first because that enhances all skills and makes all skills much easier to get. Make your way to Riverwood, come and sell just enough so you have 50 gold but make sure you still have two suits of light armor and one suit of heavy armor at least. Find Fiendal. Same old song and dance. Do what you gotta do to befriend him. And then make your way to the Whiterun stables so we can go to Dawnstar. Once you get to Dawnstar, give Fiendal absolutely everything so that you don't weigh... Well, so you weigh the least amount so that we don't get over encumbered and so that this little farm goes quicker. Now run all the way here. And this is to get our speech and our enchanting up. Now you can get into this hidden chest right here. Take all the items. Once you've taken them all, come over here into this building and we're going to be disenchanting everything we can and then enchanting everything we can with whatever makes it worth the most amount of money. And the first time you do this, you should get your enchanting between 30 and 40. Alright, and I just want to say, don't use the grand soul gems, okay? Save all the grand soul gems. Just use the other ones, sell this girl all the miscellaneous stuff, and don't buy anything from her. And then once you've done that, come outside to the smith, so that you can sell all your enchanted items that we just made, and all your other miscellaneous stuff. And if he runs out of money, or anybody, Save in front of them, kill them, load, it will all be restocked. They will have money and a new inventory. And then to make the chest actually respawn that we got from the wall, you just need to come to the front of Dawnstar, wait 24 hours until the Khajiit spawn, and then talk to the one in the robes, or save in front of her and kill her, and everything will be back in the chest, so that you can just keep on grinding. Alright. And then once you do that, guys, just grinding that out till you get it to 80, get all the perks you can. And then I accumulated 23 grand soul gems and to get it from 80 to 100 to make it fast, you just duplicate them, drop them on the ground, tell Fiendal to pick them all up, fast travel away, fast travel back. And the ones he picked up will be in his inventory. The ones on the ground have been duplicated and just keep making a bigger and bigger stack till you get about a hundred I recommend and then you get your enchanting to 100 all right and make sure for now you have the bottom five and the top one at least so you can put two enchantments on one item all right now we're headed back to the guardian stone and we're going to do the thief stone just to make 
our speech go 20% faster? And to get your speech up, guys, just buy everything you can from her. Or I should say, just buy things from her so that she has lots of money. And then just keeps buying and selling absolutely everything you have until she ends up with everything and you end up with nothing. See, we have 80,000 from selling so much stuff that we enchanted to the smith. And then I've sold all my stuff, bought all, it, all hers. And then once she has everything and you have nothing, just come back to her chest and take only the gold. All right. It's going to go pretty slow right now because you're a low level and things aren't worth too much. So only get it to 50 right now. Sorry, 45, I should say. Once it's at 45, talk to this guy. Save yourself some time. All right. And I only get it to 50 right now and we'll get it to 100 later because it will be faster later on. So just get the merchant perk so you can sell anything to any person just for now if you decide to not follow this video. And then just make two temporary weapons, whatever I slapped on drain health and fire, but you know, do whatever you want. Electricity and fire might be better. And then fast travel to Helgen, walk over to these ruins, and then walk over to Yervested. And then from Yervested, walk over to Fort Amal. All right. You'll find this lantern in this bucket, lift it up to get this little hidden gem bound bow. And this is for the purpose of having unlimited arrows. All right, now from Fort Amal, just walk over here to Mazulft, just because it's close. Get in here, pick this, and you will find the first of four glowing crystal shards. Okay guys, now we're coming over here to Halted Stream Camp, and this is to get our smithing to 100. The two most important trees in the entire game are smithing and enchanting. If you have those two to 100 with some perks in each, you can handle anything, no problem. So you come here, kill all the bandits, take this book, read it, and then we're going back to Dawnstar. I put all of the junk and garbage I accumulated from the chest grind into this barrel, and I have lots of iron ore and silver ore. This spell turns iron ore to silver ore to gold ore. And there's no better way to level up your smithing than making gold rings. And you just put transmute in one hand, cast it, sleep, rinse and repeat until all of your ore is gold. And then you just smelt it all into ingots. Once you got your ingots, you know the drill. Drop them all on the ground individually. Get Fiend all to pick them all up. Get another nice pile of 100 going. And then once you do that, you only need 750 to get it to 100, and that is with the Warrior Stone. So don't forget to go over there and get this bad boy. There's going to be lots of traveling to these stones, doing all these different skills. And then you want to make 20 necklaces, guys, because that'll be enough to make everything I show in this video and more, and 30 rings for yourself. I would keep and then just sell the rest. So just like that. Boom, smithing 100. All right. And then you can sell those rings or stash them, whatever. We're just gonna be putting in perks along the right side for now so that we can make the best armor. And this is what we got going on so far. I got all these soul gems, everything else is in these barrels. I got 500 lock picks from doing that whole grind. So that's enough to get lock picking to 100 easily. And then everything else I just stashed in here. If you do the same, just keep in mind that it does reset after a week. So moving on, we're going to be headed to Whiterun. Make sure you have a shield also. Now this next part, we're going to be boosting the most skills together in one group that you can and in this whole video. So you're gonna to wanna to create two suits. Everything I say is in the description. First, you want a ring and a necklace that fortify restoration by 25%, and then you want a heavy imperial chest piece that fortifies restoration by 25%, and a heavy imperial helmet fortify restoration 25%, and then do the same on a light armor set. So just the chest and just the helmet fortify restoration 25% again. And you can only get it this strong of an enchantment with enchanting to 100. And then for the shield, just put on fortify health and fortify block to boost block. And now we're going to be boosting our heavy armor and our light armor. So proceed to piss someone off, get everybody to attack you. And since restoration costs nothing to cast with this suit, you just want to put two healing spells in each hand and just let them wail on you. Let the pinata bash 
commence, and then once you get your restoration to 25, you want to surrender. You'll be kicked out, come back in, and then buy fast healing, but also every beginning spell, because we have all that money from the Dawnstar chest, right? So, why not? Including Muffle and Soul Trap. Alright, and then equip fast healing, and now we are going to the Mage Stone, just to make it go 25% faster. 20% faster, sorry. And then head back. Do something to make everybody hate you. And then just let them wail on you guys. Fast healing in each hand. Until you get your heavy armor to 100. And then just put on that light armor set that we created also. And then you know what to do. Let them just beat you. And it really doesn't take too long with this many people on you. And then get your light armor to 100. Stop right there. Okay, now to get our block to 100, guys, we're coming right over here to near Bleak Falls Burrow. There's a giant camp. I recommend you kill one because you can't really handle two. And just let them wail on your shield while casting fast healing. And it only takes about one in-game day, which is not long at all. And then, boom, block 100. And then make sure you kill them both and take their toes for boosting alchemy later. Alright, so we got heavy armor 100, shield 100, block, sorry, light armor. And restoration to 92, that's with the mage stone. Just to show you how long it takes. It's ridiculous. Okay guys, now we're creating another suit of light armor that we picked up from the first dungeon to fortify our conjuration and illusion by 25% on a chest piece, a helmet, and a ring, and a necklace. Alright. We already bought the spells that we're going to be using, which is Muffle and Soul Trap. So, Muffle is easiest, you just do it on the spot. Boom, 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 boom. You don't even need to make a suit for either of these, I just hate waiting the hour. And just like that, Delusion to 100, and I'm just going to creep up the side to get Quiet Casting because that makes everything so much easier, especially boosting Destruction. And then find a body, kill someone, put Soul Trap in each hand, and then just boom, 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 until you get your Conjuration to 100. Okay guys, now I'm just going to slap a couple perks in here just to make the bound bow stronger and then up here just to summon two things at a time all right and now that that's done we're just going to be headed right outside white run to this little farm and this is just to get some wheat to get our alchemy up i'm doing alchemy so early because it also enhances things like enchanting does so very important do you want to just grab all the wheat here go anywhere and then we already have two giant's toes. You can kill more giants or buy more if you want to start with more. But anyways, you just drop them on the ground. La la la. And then what do you, need? you know what to do. I actually always use 800. But I realized doing it this time, you could do it with only 600 of each. And come over to the stone. We're going to be doing the thief stone to make it go 20% faster. And then we're just going to head on in here. And then all you want to do is Giant's Toe and Wheat. And then boom, 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 boom. And then once you get it to level 60, your alchemy that is, put every perk you can in the tree up to 60. And then that will make it just go so much faster and make the potions worth more money. And just like that, alchemy to 100. And we're just going to throw every perk in here because it's very important, alchemy. Now this next part I'm about to do is the most confusing part in this whole video. Remember, it's all in the description, okay? So I'm going to show you the ingredients you need to make two types of potions. Fortify smithing and fortify enchanting, okay? If she doesn't have those ingredients, you can save, kill, or load until she does and then duplicate them. But anyways, alright? So save now in case you end up wasting all your potions or whatever, but you want to do a blue butterfly wing 
Hagraven Claw and Snowberries. Make one potion that fortifies your enchanting by 15%. Go to an enchanting table, save, drink that potion, and as fast as you can, create an alchemy suit. A necklace and a ring that fortify alchemy 26%. Gauntlets fortify alchemy 26%. And a helmet. Okay? Now, you want to put that suit that you just made on and then proceed to make more powerful potions that fortify your enchanting okay just make a bunch 15 to be safe now we have our stronger potions make sure you save before you drink them and now on a necklace ring and gauntlet potions and smithing are 29 percent better and then on the chest piece just smithing and on the helmet just alchemy any suit will do i just used a steel suit and now that we have our enhancing suit built we're going to be moving on to making the best mage suit and I like I the ebony armor set for my mage, but you do whatever you like. And you can get all the materials from her if she doesn't have it. Save killer load. Duplicate. La la la. Alright, now we got our ebony suit. We're going to be drinking one of the smithing potions we made and wearing our outfit that enhances everything. And this is just how you make god tier gear. See how much that gets enhanced. And now we're going back, drink our Fortify Enchanting Potions, and on a necklace, ring, chest piece, and helmet, we're going to do Fortify Destruction and Alteration by 29%, because those are certainly Destruction and a little bit Alteration are more attack skills, and also my favorite magical skill, certainly. So, it doesn't cost anything to cast anything in those two categories. And I added a couple different things on the boots and on the gauntlets, but you guys can do whatever you like. This is just all preference. And I also made a sword that does fire and shock damage. And as you can see, those spells cost nothing to cast. Now we are headed back to the mage stone to activate the mage because we had the thief. And now we bought these spells from the mage guy in Whiterun. Do a lightning rune in one hand and lightning bolt in the other. Buy a horse if you haven't already, cast the rune, and then hit the rune underneath the horse. That's the fastest way to get it to 50. It takes no time at all. Alright, and now from here we are going to Dragon's Reach. To buy the level 50 spells, Ice Storm, Fireball, and Chain Lightning. Alright, now we are going to High Hrothgar. So... That's why I showed you to walk to Yervested, then come up the mountain. And the best way to do this, guys, seriously, and the easiest, is you walk right in, but don't actually talk to them. Just stay here. We have quiet casting, so they can't detect you. So you just don't come past this point, and you just zap the hell out of them. And since Chain Lightning has a chain effect, it just goes so fast. And then we get it to 75 in no time at all. Make sure your uh, difficulty is on Adept, by the way. So you're not doing less damage and they have the most health. And then we come to the College of Winterhold, you know, go to the stables, fast travel over. And then you do what you need to do to get into the actual college. And then you talk to this girl, you get Ice Spear, Incinerate, and Thunderbolt. Those are the expert level spells. And to get it from 75 to 100, we're going to be using Thunderbolt on the old men. Boom, boom, boom. All right, and now... We're going to be putting a couple perks in here, the augmented perks, because it makes everything stronger and only in the fire category for now. Alright, and now we're going back to the Guardian Stone and activating the Thief Stone once again, because now, real quick, we're going to be getting our Archery to 100. And we're going to be using Bound Bow for unlimited arrows. Again, just stay in the doorway. And you got three of them from right here, which you can just pick off. One, two, three. One, two, three. And it really does not take too long, guys. Archery to 100. Alright. And I threw a couple perks in there, but you don't have to if you don't want to. And we got our sneak to 79 just from hitting them with archery. And you want to get all the perks and sneak up to Assassin's Blade to get our sneak to 100. Now we are going to be headed to Winterhold. And since we got our destruction to 100, we're going to be getting the master spells. So just talk to her, ask her if there's anything else to be learned. 
la 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 and after that i'll show you the three locations we have to travel to the first is just by dawnstar here put the book on the pedestal hit it with some flames and then pick it up and then fast travel to helgen walk over here north skybound watch just over the cliff And same thing, hit it with a frost spell, pick it up, and then take the stables over to Markarth, and then on our way here, you want to unlock the Lover's Stone for a little later. And then four Skull Lookout. You know what to do. Hit him, place the spell. And then hit this one with electricity. And then once you take this book, you can actually read it. So you take that, read the book, Power of the Elements, and now you have Firestorm. First of the three master spells in destruction. It's kind of like a big explosion. It's not my favorite, but it is a good spell. And then you come and talk to her, and she will sell you Lightning Storm and Blizzard. Okay, now, something I want to touch on, guys, is the arcane accessories in the Creation Club section. I'm not a huge fan of Creation Club always, but these actually are some of the best spells. They are the best from level 75 and under, and if you have all the perks in uh, two augmented perks in the destruction category, one of these spells is the best one in the game. So, But first, I'm just going to show you Blizzard. Keep in mind this is the suit where it doesn't cost anything to cast, so normally you wouldn't be able to cast these two side by side, but Lightning Storm is just an unending bolt of lightning. One of my favorites. How nice. Now, from these ruins, we're going to be coming to the Redwater Den. And this is just you get the Spell Tomb Telekinesis to boost perks because we have lots of skills that are to 100 already. You want to make your way down to the stilling area and then you'll find telekinesis on the ground here. Read it. And then equip that. Pick something up with it. And then fast travel a very far distance. So from here to Winterhold, we'll do it for sure. And just like that, we get our alteration to 100, legendary it. And that's how you grind perks, guys. So. Here's an example. I had to fast travel back and forth. I think it was 19 times. That's what it was to get 44 perks. And that is enough to fill up every single thing we have in the magic categories this far. My favorite sight to see. Boom, 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 boom. Perks, perks. We can get every perk in Restoration except for the very last one because it's at 93. And we're going to leave Alteration. But anyways guys, when you have Augmented Shock and Augmented Flames, that Arcane Accessory spell I was telling you about, on top of the boost from the Fear spells and Illusion, makes it do 168 per hand. So it doesn't cost anything to cast this Electric Fireball Explosion. This is an example. This is a legendary dragon. And just no time at all. Dead. Okay guys, now we will be making our way to find Phineas. And this is for the Conjuration Ritual spell. Ask him if there's anything else to be learned about Conjuration. He will give you a spell to cast at the top of the college. Go to the top of the Hall of Attainment. I have prepared a place for you there. Alright, come up here, cast this. You will do my bidding! You will, you, must be you will be punished if you do not listen. Ha ha ha! Round two. Had enough yet? Yes, you submit. Grab the sigil stone. Go back to Phineas. I simply need to borrow it for a moment. Now, let's see what there is to see. And then he will give you a spell book, guys. And then you want to buy the other three. In total, there's Flame Thrall, Dead Thrall, Storm Thrall, and Frost Thrall. 
and these spells, when you conjure these creatures, they last forever. And Dead Thrall is when you summon, uh, or sorry, bring back to life a dead human NPC. They'll be with you forever. And then don't forget to buy Dramora Lord. This is my favorite conjuration spell to just help you out. It's the Dramora Lords. And this is the Flame Thrall. So this will last forever until it's killed. This is the Frost Thrall. And then last but not least, there is the Storm Thrall. Downside to the two big guys is they sure block doorways all the time. So, and yeah. Okay, now we are making our way to find this girl to get the level 75 uh, Restoration Spell, Circle of Protection. Also get Close Wounds, you know, get the other ones if you like, the Ward Spells. And this Circle of Protection spell, guys, makes your Magicka regenerate faster and makes Undead flee. And if you use spells while you're in it, it actually slows the cost of the spells you use and makes it regenerate. So it's just a nice spell to have. And that's what you want to use. Just keep casting on repeat until your restoration is at 100. I'm not going to bother showing the Master Restoration spells. You have to be four quests into Winterhold, and they're not that good compared to the other ones. But now you know, so... Restoration's looking good. Then come and find Drevis. We already got our Illusion to 100, so now you just gotta ask him for the Illusion Ritual Quest. Super easy, you don't even have to leave the college. Alright, and then you just cast this spell. And the first one is in here. Come upstairs to the room with all the barrels on the right. And there you go. Take that. And then come down here, you guys. Make your way to the far bottom. And this is where you leave that sigil stone. And you can actually craft Atronauts if you have the right supplies. Just so you know. And then just beside that is another book. And if it's not here, you guys, it probably got knocked off because of a fight or an explosion. So look around the room. But... If it's not there, you could load, and it should be right there. People mention that in comments of my other videos. And then you just come over to the other side of the quarters. And then just under this bench, that makes three. And now we just run up here to the Arcanium. Grab that, and then go back to Drevis. Yes, very good. Here then is the first of the illusion spells. He'll give you one, buy the other two. And then you always want to buy Call to Arms, Harmony, Hysteria, and Invisibility. Visibility is one I throw in my favorites through all playthroughs. Okay guys, now we are headed to this Dwemer Ruin. Come in here, make your way down. No matter what, you should be able to handle yourself by now if you did half of the stuff in this video. I am the most powerful mage in all of Tamriel! Ah! None will escape my fiery wrath and grab another glowing crystal shard. Okay, guys, now from the Loverstone, fast travel and walk over to Deep Folk Crossing. And this is three out of four of the Crystal Shards. And then you want to come to this ruin, walk over from Markarth for the final shard. You do not need to have Lost of the Ages quest activated to complete any of this, just so you know. Come in here, you'll be greeted by this ghost. And the journal and the book to start the quest is on her body over there, if you want it. And then make your way all the way down. I'll show you the little puzzle. One, two, three, four, five in the middle. Or you can get it wrong and fight the guy if you want. And then four to four. Make sure you pick all the locks, guys, in everything you do, seriously. Now, you want to come over to these ruins. 
Put the four shards in here. Pop the old girl open. It's true. It's all true. And then make your way down and you will find the forge and fight the forge master. Aha! Uh -huh. Alright. Grab the materials. Make the crown. The only possible choice. Slap that bad boy on. We are looking good. Okay guys, now we are headed over to the lover stone because with the warrior stone or any other stone and this stone, it ends up being a 35% increase in experience gain because that's 15% to all skills. So it makes the rest of all the skills so much easier. Now we are going to be creating the best warrior suit. Alright, so it's going to be a Daedric set, of course. Alright, and then put on your outfit to make smithing better, and then drink your smithing potion. And then fortify everything. To make it as good as it possibly can be. Don't forget the armor. And the crown, why not, right? Looking good. And even with no points in one or two handed, just the damage is so crazy. Okay, now we're going to be making a couple more fortify enchanting potions because it takes about one potion per item you enchant because with two effects it takes a little bit more time. But anyways, one handed and two handed attacks do 47% more damage on a ring, a necklace, um, gauntlets, and boots. And then the chess piece regens stamina and health 36%. That's always what I do. And now we're doing the good old fast travel grind just to fill up some perks. Alright. Now, we did it another almost 30 times. And we're going to fill all the perks in most of the trees. We got to 100. Heavy armor. Block. One of my favorites with the right shields. And then all of archery. All of light armor. So now you can wear whatever you want and make the most of it. Everything in sneak that we can. Everything in lockpick that we can. A couple more things in speech. And we're level 169. Alright, now that we have the Daedric Daggers. We come back to uh, the Greybeards, and in no time you can get your sneak to 100. It works best when you catch the guy who's about to shout for the thing they want you to shout at. Then you can just keep on getting him before he shouts and goes quick. Alright, sneak to 100. Okay, now we're coming to Dragon Tooth Crater. So come here from the Lover Stone or Deepful Crossing and grab this shout, which is Elemental Fury, Dragon Soul 2, can't go wrong. And then from here, walk over to the Shrine of Perit, and this is for the best shield in the game. Also at the Shrine, there is a skill book right here for speech if you like. Talk to this guy. Fetch for me a death bell flower, one silver ingot, a flawless ruby, and some vampires. Okay, a silver ingot and a death bell flower you can buy from the people in Whiterun, but I'm going to show you where to get vampire dust and a flawless ruby guaranteed. And another shout that we need. Three birds stoned at once. Right, come to this ruin near Falkreath. Come down here, take a left. Uh -huh. And then right here, guys, is a flawless ruby, and it may not be here for you. It might be in this crack or on the floor or on the other side, but there's always one here guaranteed, so don't worry. And you make your way through. Make sure you head up. You'll find a master vampire. Take his vampire dust, and then proceed on to get another word of elemental fury. Alright, now, head back to the shrine, 
Give him your offering. Thank you. Breathe deep, mortal. I would have you hear me well. I want you to go to the Thardoms and kill Orchendo. Now you just have to go to this ruin that's really close by. Make your way down. It's a big long ruin, so be ready. And kill this guy. Your Head on back. Obedience is rewarded. And now we have the best shield in the game, Spellbreaker. Now this is the best shield for a few reasons, alright? First of all, it's unique and awesome, has a good defense, but mostly when you lift it up, it makes a temporary magical ward that blocks all spells, and it even lasts for a second if you put the shield down and go to swing. So, it's just so, so awesome, and if you're a warrior, it's a must-have, guys. Now, we're headed to Markarth, and this is to get the best one-handed weapon other than something you could make, and that is the Mace of Molag Ball. You just gotta come in, let this play out, save her or don't, Fast travel away, fast travel back, and that is when you will see this interaction here. I know everything about this house. Ha 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 ha! From Molag Ball! Yes. Your reward is waiting for you, mortal. Further down. Okay, now I'm not going to hold I your hand and walk you through the quest and saving the priest, but anyways, long story short, you go out, get a priest, get him to come back here. And then this plays out. Think you can best Boethius faithful? Now! No more. I submit, Molag Ball. The mace, the mace of Molag Bal. I give you its true power, mortal. All right, guys. One of the sickest weapons in the game, with one of the best effects too. Thirty-seven points of stamina damage, thirty-seven points of magic damage, and fills a soul gem, and looks awesome. All right, now we're headed to the Shrine of Meridia. To get here, just take the carriage to Solitude, and then walk over. And on the outside is the final word for elemental fury which is one of my favorite shouts in the game and a must-have in every build all right come up here if you didn't get this ball from a dungeon already she'll send you to find it it is time for my splendor to return to skyrim not again this would be cool in vr Okay, now once you talk to her, come over here, and we're just going to clear out the temple. Now this is the very end, and I'm just going to have a bit of fun. Summon my buddies, go invisible, sneaks at 100, no one can detect me, do my stealthy little roll, and get him quick! Haha, as his black soul arises. See, he dropped Dawn Breaker on the ground there, guys. Alright, now I'm going to show you something. Kill his evil soul quickly pick up the Dawnbreaker that he dropped and this is how you get two all right you pick this up and there's one in the pedestal too there see all right take the one on the ground first and then take this and that's how you get two how awesome no better way to do the dawn guard if you're being with the dawn guard than to use two-handed Dawnbreaker for real and that is that guys all right, now we got two, as you can see. When you hit undead, sometimes they explode in a fiery explosion, and it's awesome. And, okay, I'm going to teach you something. When you have something in your left hand, that determines the swing speed. So you want your dagger in your left hand and the mace in the right. And with elemental fury, all right, this is how fast you swing normally. Elemental fury, dagger in the left, mace in the right. You are a force to be reckoned with. Okay guys, now we are going to be making a thief outfit, and this has to do with thief skills and lock picking. So, best light armor in the game is the uh, dragon scale armor. Make sure you have your suit, which is, enhances your smithing by 29%. Drink that potion. You know the drill. We're going to enhance Dawnbreaker, the two we have. Mesa Molag Ball. 
and then the armor we just made and spellbreaker 110 armor defense that's crazy okay now come up here you know what to do save drink a potion and we are going to be making an outfit now on the ring bows do 47 percent more damage lock picking is 47 percent easier the necklace same thing the gauntlets same thing the helmet same thing and then the chest is again health and stamina regenerate 36 percent faster and then on the boots i did one-handed does 47 percent more and muffled steps then we're going coming to dawnstar and we're going to be getting our speech to 100 guys because we have such valuable gear and we've accumulated so much money already that it goes so much faster all right all you have to do is sell her your expensive crazy gear we've made up to this point and then just go get the money from the chest and you get it to 100 don't forget your stuff in the chest when you're done okay now we're going to be getting our pickpocketing to 100 and it's easier to do this if you have the spell invisibility and your sneak is up all right so get sent to jail save your game pick this lock and then also go find your gear save your game pick this lock it's a master so all right guys and this can glitch out if you get caught or get in trouble for some stupid reason so be careful face the exit where you came in cast invisibility crouch steal his money and you want to place 200 gold on him and then take it again and again and again until you get to level 70 with your pickpocket once you're at 70 you can do about six seven hundred and then once your pickpocket is at about 80 then you can do 900 at once until you get it to 100 and that's the fastest way by far pickpocketing 100 the stupidest skill in the game and don't forget your money because you want to stash the bulk of it somewhere else while you do that all right now we're going to be doing the perk grind to fill up all the trees we got up till now all right level 190 guys now we're going to slap all the perks in speech all the perks in pickpocketing And we'll just put a couple in one-handed and two-handed. All right. Now we're going to be doing lock picking, guys. So from picking all the locks I came into contact with up to this point, I got it to 35. I just want to point out, do every city first. Most houses and stores have a front and back door and some kind of locked items inside. So do that with every single city. Do Whiterun, do Falkreath, and then Dawnstar. There's a museum there white uh winter hold lots of things there and then so so much in riften so many houses high level locks and then i was just in windhelm when i almost had it to 70 so much in windhelm to pick also all right once you get it to 70 i'm showing you guys the most efficient way possible you go to solitude all right and this guy can train you up to level 75 so then you train it up to 75 so that you don't have to grind it all right and then continue picking all the locks in windhelm then i picked all the locks in morthal and then solitude so so much in solitude so make sure you get it all and then i was in markarth and just from doing the homes outside and stores i got it to 85 without doing the museum yet then i came to riften and then you want to just join the thieves guild all right, do another little perk grind because we trained ourselves at 190, so we have to be 191 before we can be trained again in the same skill. Just so you know, all right. I went back and forth twice to get a bit in lock picking, and then you have to be at loud and clear quest, which is the first quest of the Thieves Guild for Vex to be able to train you, and she can train you all up right. to 90. You so when you get to 85, me. come here. Best way. And how you save yourself the most time, okay? And it costs twenty-two thousand. Now, coming back to Markarth, the most locks you can pick in total for sure is the museum. So, come to the keep. The Dwemer Museum isn't open to anyone unless they have invisibility. 
you dumb guard. Pick this. And with sneak to 100 guys and the invisibility spell, it's really no problem to avoid guards completely. And then, you know, get to your picking spree. With the outfit we're wearing that helps us pick locks, everything is just such a breeze. And then once you pick every single thing you possibly can in this entire museum, I got it from 90 to 97. And keep in mind, that's with the crown, which increases our XP gain by 35%. Okay, now you want to come to the mine. Once you get it to 97, just the mine that's in Markarth. Come down. I don't care for killing these people, really, so I just snuck around. Come over here, pick this, and there is a skill book to increase lock picking. I recommend you always save skill books for when you're in the high 90s. Alright, now come to Riften, to the Thieves Guild, and in one of the rooms is another lockpick skill book. Boom. All right, and also in Riften, come to the main building where the Jarl is, where we get our final lockpick skill book so we didn't have to grind the last three levels because those are the worst, you know, those are the worst. So what better way to get it to 100 than the last levels using books? Read this. Ladies and gentlemen, lockpicking to 100. It's honestly easier than you think, I swear. Alright. Another little fast travel grind for some perks. And we're just gonna get every perk we can in lockpicking. Nothing like unbreakable where they don't break anymore. Okay. 199. Alright guys, now if all we have left is one-handed and two-handed. And the best way, by far is by attacking Shadowmere. So come to Windhelm, come in this house, start the Dark Brotherhood. It really doesn't take long to get Shadowmere and it's well worth it. He just asks you to kill Grelog the Kind, Grelog the Awful. Shut up Grelog! Ha ha ha! You're welcome kids. Then when you sleep somewhere outside of a city, Astrid will abduct you. Alright, once she abducts you, continue with the missions and immediately get the warrior stone so that it goes 20% quicker. And like six or so missions in, that's when you get Shadowmere. Alright? Now make sure your difficulty's on Adept so you do the most damage and he has the most health possible. And then do Elemental Fury. Just hit him once or twice. And then wait an hour. And this is by far the quickest way to get one and two handed. Alright. One handed, 100, boom. And then I recommend if you're going to use a two handed weapon, do swords because they swing so much faster. It seems like elemental fury doesn't really affect hammers. Alright. And two handed, increased, 100. Ha ha ha. And now we fast travel. To get the last of the perks, ladies and gentlemen. Alright. Now, go to the Ritual Stone. Make sure you're wearing the crown. And we fast traveled so many more times so that we could get all the rest of the perks. And level 251, guys. I put all of my skills between Magicka, Health, and Stamina evenly. So, now you know. You get every perk in every tree. You have to be level 250, and if you do it evenly, 930 in 2, and 940 in 1 of the bottom 3. And 146 times fast travel to get every perk in every tree, ladies and gentlemen, best build of all time. Now, we're not done yet. Alright? Now this is how much damage all of my things do with all the perks in 1 and 2 handed. It's just ridiculous. The Daedric Mace is like 540. Now, to continue our god build... We're going to be grabbing the Ritual Stone because it makes you the Night King and you can summon Undead Legion to fight for you. And we're going to the Atronaut Stone because it absorbs uh, magic damage that is incoming to you and it fills your magic. And it says that your magic regenerates 50% slower. But honestly, if you're wearing the suit we made where you don't need Magicka, that doesn't matter at all. And at this point, we have so much Magicka, it still doesn't matter at all. Okay, now come to the College of Winterhold because we now have our alteration to 100 with every perk in the tree. 
and all we're missing out of the magic crazy spells is Tolfdiers. So ask him about the master spell quest, and all you have to do is he sends you to get a dagger, which I didn't show, and then kill a dragon and hit it with the dagger. That's it. Right? Dual wielded Dawnbreaker, killed him in one second. Equip that dagger in the right hand, hit him, and then go back to Tolfdier. And it is that easy. Then he will give you one spell, and then you have to buy the other. It's Dragon Hide and Mass Paralysis are the master ones. Make sure you also get Paralyzed, because that's just an awesome, awesome spell to have. And Dragon Hide makes you ignore 80% of all physical damage, which is crazy. And just an awesome thing to have, really. I put it in my favorites. And then, okay, I'm going to give you an example of the Ritual Stone. So since we have the crown, I put it on. I summon my Undead Legion. It's supposed to be a once a day ability, but if you take the crown on and off, you can just keep summoning and summoning and summoning. So you're literally a god. <laughs> every perk, every tree, totally powerful, every amazing spell. <laughs> Do the most damage you can with all weapons across the board. You can summon legions and legions of undead. See, take it on. Or sorry, take it off, put it back on, and then go over here. Brand new. Raise them up. If you're on console, I think there's a max to how many you can raise, but if you're on PC, you can raise unlimited. This really is just one of my favorite things to do in this game. Attack your old friends! Ha ha ha! These thralls don't mess around. Look at that. Zapped and hit the ceiling. Okay, guys, now I'm going to give you an example of just how powerful we really are and fight this ebony warrior. Alright? Did you see that? I killed myself because I hit myself in the thigh. That is how powerful I am. Bet none of you have ever done that. That's how it's supposed to go when you use Elemental Fury. Just so fast. And now we got Spellbreaker and my Daedric Mace. And it's so powerful that when I hold it down, it kills the Ebony Warrior in three swings. Haha! -ha! You are nothing compared to me. Dual wielding both Dawnbreakers. What a sight to see. You little wussy. You yield. Ha ha ha. No mercy will be shown. Boom, boom, boom. Decapitation. Ha ha ha. And last but certainly not least, two handed. Decapitation. And you know what, guys? That's it. This is the best build of all time. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and as always, I will catch you in the next one. So much coming, guys. Peace out. See you soon.